Hey, what's up everybody? Clayton here with Go Analytics, and today I wanna to talk about creating measures table in your Power BI reports. So let's get started. Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. All right. So today we're dealing with a problem that a lot of Power BI beginners run into, which is you might have several data tables in your Power BI model and you're creating your measures inside of those tables. Well, very quickly, you'll find that it'll become very difficult to find the measures that you need. So you're scrolling through all of your tables. You're trying to figure out, okay, where did I put that total sales measure? I can't remember if I put it in uh, my fact table if, or if it was in my dimensions table. So today we're talking about creating a measures table in Power BI to be able to organize all of your measures. So let's head on over to my laptop and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so here we are in Power BI desktop and I have a report here that I've been working on. And as you can see here, I have several tables uh, some of them are fact tables, some of them are, are dimension tables. And this is what you're going to find often when you're building a report, is you're working with five, six, maybe sometimes a dozen tables. And some of them are fact tables, some are dimensions. And as your report grows, you're creating more and more DAX measures. Before you know it, uh, your measures are scattered all over the place, like in this report here. As you can see, if I open up here, I have several measures under this table here, uh, under my calendar table. I have some measures in here as well. Uh, under my provinces table, there's a couple. So as you can see here, it's scattered all over, tucked away inside uh, unrelated tables sometimes, and it can become a nightmare to find anything that you're trying to reuse and sometimes you might end up actually creating duplicate measures just because you haven't been able to find the one that you need. So this can really slow down your workflow. It also clutters your data model and makes it way harder for others or future you, in fact, to understand what's going on. Uh, but there's a simple fix, uh, which is a centralized measures table. So a measures table is kind of like your command center for all of your calculations. So it will house all of your DAX measures in this one table. So why do you need a measures table? Uh, primarily to keep your measures organized. And this is key, especially if you're working in a team where you're collaborating on reports. Uh, but also it's easier for readability. So be, having that central place where uh, your teammates can see what KPIs or metrics are being tracked is uh, an important um, part of your report as well. So how do we create a measures table? All right, so it's pretty simple. We start here at the home tab and I'll go into enter data here. So that is the quickest way to start a new table. And as you can see here, it asks me for a column and uh, you know, I'm gonna change this uh, here to dummy and the value here, I'll put one. This doesn't really matter uh, because as you'll see in a second, we're going to be deleting this column anyways. Um, and the last thing that we need to do is change the name of this table from table, uh, I'll call it measures table, and then I'll load it into our... All right, once that's done, we'll see here that we have this measures table with one column, and it, it added a little two here next to it just because I had a measures table in this model already. So, I will, um, I'll just go ahead and use this one here. So we can start to uh, introduce this as a measures table by adding new measures. So I could right click here and choose new measure and start writing a new DAX measure. Or I can also bring in measures in there. So for example, I can take this um, GDP here 
and move this measure into our measures table. So I can do that by selecting the measure and now our measures tools is uh, selected here and under home table, I can change it from Rio GDP annual to our measures table two here. And now, as you can see here, we have our measure inside of our measures table. And at this point, I can now delete this dummy column here. So I'm going to click on the three ellipses here and choose delete from model. It'll ask me if I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. And when I do that, a couple of things uh, have changed here. So now that I deleted that column, Power BI recognizes this as a measured stable. So, and you can see that by seeing that it's been drafted all the way up to the top now so that all of our measures show up right at the top of the list of all of our data tables here and the icon changed as well. So we see here that these data tables have a little grid icon, whereas our measures table has a little calculator icon to signify that that's where all of our measures are. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple other measures in there just to, to illustrate how we can further improve how we organize our measures inside of our measures table. So I'm bringing in um, another GDP and maybe I'll take uh, one of our housing starts measures here and move it to our measures table here. And I'll bring in this uh, data availability measure as well. All right, so I have four measures in our measures table right now. And ideally, we would bring all of our measures into this table and then organize them. And when I say organize them, I mean putting them into folders. And it's pretty simple to do that. We just have to go over to the model view. And over here, we have our measures table and we can group our measures into folders. So let's say these two uh, GDP uh, measures, I can hold the control key and select both of them. And when I do that, it opens up the properties pane over here and I can enter a folder name under display folder. So I'll call these our GDP measures. And as you can see, now both of those measures are tucked in nicely and neatly under this GDP measures folder, which I can expand and contract. And you can even have subfolders. So let's say this uh, change apartment in our housing starts, we can actually do subfolders. So my main folder here is going to be called housing starts and I can put a backslash and say uh, start numbers. So when I hit enter, it will neatly categorize that measure under housing starts and under start numbers. I can go ahead and do the same thing for this data availability. So I can put it into our housing starts folder and say uh, these, this is related to date time so that I can neatly organize all of our date time measures under this folder. It's a neat way to organize all of your measures inside of your measures table. So that's it. That's all about measures table in Power BI. It's a very useful way to keep all of your measures organized and a good way to collaborate with other individuals or clients uh, and 
you know, before we, we end the video, I also wanted to emphasize that uh, you want to name your, your measures table something that's meaningful and any folders and subfolders that you build in there, name it something meaningful so that it's easy for people to understand, especially, especially when you're collaborating with others. This might not be that big of a deal if you're just working on your own reports and you know exactly what you're doing, but even your future self will thank you for naming things in a meaningful way. The other thing that I wanted to mention is you can also uh, organize the ordering of your folders within your measures table by uh, numbering each folder. So from a, a 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, so they will appear in order because the folders appear in alphabetical order. So that's it. That's all from measures table. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video.